Hey, thanks so much for opening this clip. I appreciate your time. It's going to take a few minutes to get through this, but we are going to cover here a little bit about our experience and what we're doing with the world of lacrosse and how this all has come to be. We're going to talk about a little bit of our experience about how we have managed athletes for the past 18 years and also the financial side of how can this be done without taking money from our family pocket, which is kind of an interesting way we have done this for lots and lots of times. First of all, I am Kurt Whiteside. I'm one of the owners of the Q Sport. The Q Sport actually is a brand that monitors uh, the a couple other things, the Queen of Diamonds, which is a softball, fast pit softball for girls. We've been doing fast pit softball now since uh, 1996 and have been taking teams over to Europe since that time. So we are used to gathering athletes, putting them on planes with their moms or dads and sending them to Europe and playing in events. The challenge was made this past year to bring a lacrosse program over there to do the same thing, which we are obviously up for the challenge. Um, so we've got lots of experience in, in having to, to do all this, this stuff. Our goal happens to be to bring four teams of lacrosse teams over there. We've got obviously our, our colleagues in the Netherlands are fully aboard, fully aware of what's going on and fully ready to, uh, to put on this ad uh, adventure. Uh, one of our goals in doing this is going to be the same thing as we have done in the world of fast pit softball, and that is we want to grow the sport. Uh, the way we grow this thing is uh, pretty simple. Right prior to the weekend's tournament's beginnings, we actually have a clinic uh, for youth, and that's the 10 and 12 and maybe 13, 14-year-old athletes that want to learn about the game. They actually have come in for our fast pitch world from, from Belgium, from, of course, the Netherlands and from Germany. In this case here, probably most of the Dutch will be there that want to learn about this. The good thing about this adventure is that it actually puts our American athletes up on some kind of pedestal, which is kind of fun. They end up being a little bit rock star-like during the course of the weekend because these athletes tend to follow them all weekend long, which is a kind of a fun thing. But teaching the youth, obviously, is the beginning of the growth of the future of the game. Secondly, we do a coaches clinic, which I know most of you don't uh, uh, or are not concerned about. But we do a coaches clinic just for them to exchange ideas to give them better insight and maybe in some cases for us to get some insight on some changes on our side as well. Then lastly, we do an umpire or referee uh, clinic uh, in which they just get together to talk about the ins and outs of the game to help hopefully make all of them better, not just the Dutch, but the Americans as well. Anyhow, on the financial side, it's uh, real interesting. Over the, all these years, it's been a financial issue has been the biggest, biggest hurdle in getting uh, a mother and father uh, and, and daughter to go. Uh, bottom line is that on every trip we do need a parent to go, so it's a matter of two people minimum that need to go. But of course the cost being about $3,500, it's a big concern for most people. However, we have uh, kind of hurdled that a little bit in that uh, most of our athletes and parents do not pay from family funds. We have five significant fundraisers that are pretty clever uh, most of them you'll look at it and you'll think, wow, this is uh, something I've never seen before, which is along those lines. But if you take one of these five and run them for 90 days, that should generate about $3,500 or about the cost of one person going. If you do this twice, of course, you know the math. I don't have to explain that to you. Also, alongside of that, we have a raffle in the fall and a raffle in the spring. Each of these raffles uh, average about $1,500 per raffle per family, which is kind of cool because two of those raffles can also almost fund one person. Now, if you do a terrible job, you're still going to get about $1,000 out of these two raffles, which is kind of okay as well, and that's doing a bad job and not paying attention. But obviously, as everything goes, your daughter athlete did not get to be good because she sat in the couch. She actually worked at it. Uh, most parents did not get their jobs and their positions because they sat there and did nothing, and they just said, oh, you're good at working, so let's move you up the ladder. you got to work. you got to work at this two to keep the financial impact to a minimum. Uh, a little bit about the trip detail on this, uh, which is really going to be interesting for you all. We uh, leave on a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday evening, actually, we leave out of uh, America and head to Europe. Um, we arrive Thursday morning early, early, like 6 or 7 a.m. That day, we head to our host city. Uh, we tour the host city. You guys can get a nap. That day is kind of a chill day in which we just discuss what we're doing. We have a meeting in which we discuss where to go, what to do, the setup for the week. And, of course, we are not shy about emails. Prior to the event, you're going to get a lot of information as to where we're going, how we're going, what we're going to be doing on an everyday basis and so forth. So at that meeting, when we're there, it's going to be finally reality. Uh, we're going to discuss again on-site 
exactly what's going on. Friday um, is an early wake up day. Uh, oddly enough, our bodies are going to say wake up, but of course we're going to be a little bit jet lagged. But nonetheless, we're going to be on a motor coach and we always head to Amsterdam to go see Anne Frank's home and tour the city a little bit. And during that day, even though it's a kind of a tour day, we are back home to our hotel, uh, getting changed, getting ready, uh, getting fed because we start our tournament that evening on Friday night. So Friday night we play, Saturday we play, Sunday we play. Sunday evening is kind of the important, kind of fun kind of next part of the trip and that's when we get on a motor coach. We're headed through Antwerp and Brussels and into Paris and we end up in Paris on Friday, I'm sorry, Sunday evening uh, later on. A little bit of time to get a crate but nonetheless we're going to get there and you'll be in Paris. Monday and Tuesday are duplicate days. We actually meet, meet everyone in the breakfast hall and we discuss what are you doing, where are you going, we can give you a hand there. We've been there a hundred times plus, uh, so it's easy to let you know. If you want to tour with us, that's fine. It's, it's okay. We kind of know the layout of the city. Matter of fact, I think from, from, from our staff, I think we know that city better than we know our hometowns. But anyhow, those Monday and Tuesday are completely tour days. Um, you can do what you want, where you want to go. You can hang out with us. You can hang out in the lobby. You can sleep in. However, when you're in Paris, you don't generally sleep in. Wednesday morning, we're up early, we're on a motor coach back to the airport, and most of us are all sitting back in our easy chairs by supper time or just a bit after. Um, anyhow, the frequently asked questions happen to be on our website at www.theqsport.com. If you're interested in knowing what we've done in the past with fast fit softball and how we will do it for lacrosse, go there. There's also some interesting information about the lacrosse side as well. But uh, by and large, it's a, an interesting trip. It's a, obviously, we're doing this for the culture reason. We're doing it for history. Uh, we're doing it for travel. We're doing it to play as well. So just don't get uh, kind of like pigeonholed in the fact that we're going to go there to play. That is an important factor of what we do do. However, it is also about history and culture and travel and opening the minds of these young athletes in the world of what they do so that they can be stimulated in some way that might make an impact on their future as, as uh, not only teachers of the game, but in life as being mothers, as being teachers in school, as being in the industries and so forth. So it's a multifaceted adventure that has played itself out pretty well in the past years. Also, one final thing I'll have to say is that if you do need some re references concerning uh, those people that have gone in the past, we literally have uh, well over a thousand. And if you want to look at the whole list, that's fine. I'm not sure I'm going to divulge the entire thousand, a few thousand, in fact, of the people that have gone. But sure, certainly we have someone in your area that has gone in the past that I can hook you up with and let you know how we manage things and so forth. So anyhow, by and large, uh, we'd love you to be a part of this, but this is kind of a, a, a pre-clip little piece of detail that we send out to folks that are interested in this so that they have a little bit of an understanding of this adventure. Anyhow, thanks so much for listening and do hope to hear back from you.